The natural log function derivative is actually one of the easiest derivatives to find despite the fact that it is log base e where e is an irrational number. Let's see in this video how easy it really can be. So I've got two rules here. The first rule being that if you have y equals ln of some kx where k is just a constant value, then the derivative of that function is always one on x. It doesn't matter what the k value is. Okay, so for example, the derivative of y equals ln of 3x is just one on x. It really is as simple as that. In part A of rule number two, I'm gonna show you why this happens and why the k value doesn't matter. So let's get into that, a bit more interesting. So rule number two says, if you have y equals ln of some function of x, and I acknowledge that 3x is technically a function of x, which is why this works, but we're typically thinking of more complex functions. You could have a trigonometric function in here, you could have a cubic, you could have any, all sorts of stuff. This rule holds up. If this is the case, then the derivative of that function is going to be the derivative of the inside, this f of x, divided by just the f of x. Let's see that in action. So example nine, part A says, find the derivative of each of the following with respect to x, and A is ln of five x. So we're gonna use rule number two instead of rule number one. Now, we know that the answer is gonna be one on x from rule number one, let's see why. A, y equals ln of five x. Now that derivative of that inside is going to be, so f dash x, that is, is gonna equal five. Okay, so I need to do that so I can find this derivative. So I can divide it by the original, which is just going to equal five divided by five x, which five over five is just one. So they simplify down to one on x. And that's why, regardless of what the k value is, it's always gonna be one on x. These two numbers are gonna be the same and it's gonna cancel out. Nice. Okay, let's have a look at b, which is slightly different. Looks similar, but slightly different. So B, we have ln of 5x plus 3 this time. So the plus 3 on the end. Now, don't worry too much about this x is greater than negative 3 on 5. The textbook we're using has just put that in for due diligence. It's just saying that if x is any less than this, uh, the log is going to be trying to evaluate when there's a 0 or a negative in here, which can't be done. Okay, so we're not going to have any possible x value smaller than that, but it doesn't impact our question. So try not to be too thrown off by that sort of thing when you see it in a test. Sometimes it's relevant, sometimes it's not. So just have a read and have a think. So let's move on here. So the derivative of the inside function is going to be f dash x, which is equal to just five again. So that part's the same, but the denominator will be different in my answer. So if that's y equals dy dx, and I should have, oops, dx, I should have also written dy dx over here as well. So dy dx is going to equal five over five x plus three. That's why it's slightly different, that denominator is different. And keep in mind, because the denominator is five x plus three and there's addition there, you cannot cancel out these fives and say this is not equal to, so you can't say it's one over x plus three, okay? They are not the same thing, you cannot cancel when there's an addition there. So our final answer is five over five x plus three. Okay, I'm gonna move on to example 10 with a couple more tricky ones, but if you are enjoying this video and you've learned something, make sure you click the like button. It tells YouTube that my math videos are helping you out. With that in mind, also check out some other videos on my channel after this one though. Let's see the end of this. So differentiate with the following, the following with respect to x of ln of x squared plus two. So I'll write the function down. We'll get y equals going on. Y equals ln of x squared plus two. And again, we're gonna be finding the derivative of the inside function, f of x, f dash x is therefore gonna equal two x. We're going to therefore have the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to two x divided by x squared plus two. And again, you cannot cancel out any of those x's because we have an addition on the denominator. And lastly, this derivative here, when we've got y equals ln of x all squared. Now, ln of x's derivative is just one on x, but we have it being squared. 
okay? So this is gonna be an instance where we need to use the chain rule, which means that I'm going to have the derivative of this f dash x, and I'm also going to have the derivative, and this is gonna be a weird way to annotate it, but the derivative of this outer function here, which is going to be my g dash of x, and I'm also just gonna have the original function y. So the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be equal to the inside function derived. Now ln of x derived is just one on x. So I'm gonna keep that color coded, one on x, multiplied by the outside function derived, which is going to be just two times ln x. Now it's technically ln x to the power of one because we reduce the power from two to one, but we don't really need to write that. It just adds confusion. So we're just gonna have ln of x. We can tidy this up now and say it's going to be equal to two ln x divided by x. And yes, again, it bears repeating, those x's can't cancel because the x on the numerator is stuck inside the log function. So they can't just cancel out. Alrighty, and that's that. Hopefully that helps you understand a bit more about finding the derivative of natural log functions. Uh, if you want more practice, in the description is a free worksheet. You just have to navigate to my website and click download on the worksheet. And I've also gonna have to posted here solutions to that worksheet, work solutions. So do it first, check your answers, and hopefully you get really good at deriving the natural log function. Thanks for watching.